In this video, we will start the actual A star search for generating a path from start to goal. And if you remember uh, from a couple of videos um, back, I actually listed some different things you need to do or you need to go through to actually create the A star algorithm. And I'm going to create videos for each of those steps to make it easier for you to uh, implement this so we can do it step by step. And if you make some mistake and something doesn't work, then it's easier for you to figure out where um, the, where you went wrong or where something uh, didn't work. Because instead of just creating t uh, one long video with all the steps in it, and then you would have to backtrack to figure out where you went wrong. Well, then you can simply just figure out, okay, I went wrong in video 6.5 or whatever. And then it's easier for me to help you if you need some help uh, through the comment section. So the first thing we have to do is to add the start note to the open list. So that's exactly what we will be doing in this video. And we will also be adding some debug um, information. So it's easier for us to see uh, what is in the open list and so on. So let's uh, start by doing that. So the first thing we have to do is to open our script. So go to your script folder and find your A star folder and then open the A star, um, A -star um, script here because we need to be able to generate a path. So inside, inside the A star uh, script, let's see, I have too many open here Just to find the correct one, this one. Inside the script, we will have to call the create notes function to generate our actual notes in the game. And we also have to um, uh, create a function for generate the path from start to uh, end. And this is a function we will keep uh, developing and it's a function we will keep adding stuff to until we're done with the algorithm. So let's just start making a public static void called get path. So later this one will return something to us, but for now it won't, will not return anything. And get path will... Um, take in a point which is start and the reason that we put in start is because we need to add start to the open list so that's the first step right okay so this is our path generation thing but we need to call this function from somewhere and we also need to execute the create notes function the first thing i would like to do is to execute the create notes function and i will do that by writing if notes is null. So if our nodes doesn't exist, then we need to create them. Let's say in our game, we might want to generate the path more times when the map spawns or when we place a new tower, we need to regenerate the path. But there is no reason to um, for us to generate the nodes every time. So only if the nodes are null, then we are going to say create nodes. Because yeah, then we only create them once and we don't need to use processing power for creating new nodes all the time. Okay. So besides this, we will have to execute this function from somewhere. And where can we execute that from? Well, what we are doing right now is only for debugging or for testing or creating the algorithm. And later we will be calling this in a little other way. But all the work we have done to create the algorithm will still work. Um, but we just need to execute the call of this function in another way later. So for now, we can just go to the A star debugger and go to the click tile function or not click tile function under update here and we can actually say if input dot get key down key code dot space so if i click space then i would like to generate a path right so we click on start and we click on goal and then we click space and then the path between the two of them um, will be generated so we can just say a star dot get path here. Okay. So right now it's complaining. And the reason it's complaining is because it wants a starting position, a point of start position. Well, we have a start and a goal up here, which is a tile script. And the tile script has a grid position. So we can just say start dot grid position because the grid position is a point, And that's exactly what this get path is asking for. So now we can do that. I'm not going to put in error handling if you press that button before you actually set the start position and so on, because it's only for debugging. There's no reason to make something foolproof or um, error proof 
when we don't need it in the final product is only for bu uh, debugging and there's no reason to do that. So for now, don't uh, click space before you have set the actual start button. Okay, so now we are executing get path. So if we go back to A star, we would need to add the starting node to the open list. So we need to create an open list first. So write hash set and node because it needs to contain nodes and call it open list. So that is our open list. The next thing we need to do is to add the start to the open list. And to do that, we will actually have to create a reference to start. So let's just make a new node and call it current node. We will need this later as well. And it's equal to nodes start. There we go. So as you can see, we have a dictionary here that contains all our nodes. It contains a point and a node, and we can use the start position, which we get from get path from our A star debugger. When we press space, it will tell our A star where we are starting right here. And then we know where the starting point is. And then we can find the starting point in the notes dictionary and set it equal to this. So we have a reference here to the start. And then we need to add the starting point to um, open list. So we can say open list dot add current node. So that is it. That's the first step where we add the start to the open list. And right now we can save this and nothing is going to show up um, right now. If we run this and we click on this one and this one and press space, nothing is going to show up. But it, it the code executed, I'm pretty sure. But we would like to do something so that we can see what nodes are on the open list, right? Just as I did um, before when I explained everything, I added, uh, I made the nodes uh, blue, for example, light blue when they were on the open list. So let's do that as well. Um, let's see if I can click the right things here. There we go. So let's go to the A star debugger. And in here, we will create a new function for um, actually debugging the path. So let's go down here. Let's see, click tile and there. You can make a public void debug path. Hash set. And then right click on the hash set, quick actions. Oops, I'm very good at clicking right now. Quick actions using system.collection.generics and node open list. So this is our open list. So we need to color all the tiles in the open list. So we can say for each uh, node, node in open list. So for each node in the open list, we would like to change the color. So we can say node the tile ref the sprite renderer, just as we did before. Uh, color equals color dot sign, for example. You can also use the RPG color if you want another color than that. And then we need to say node the tile ref dot sprite render dot sprite equals blank tile. There we go. So now when we can debug the path by adding all tiles or coloring all tiles in the open list so it's easier to, for us to see which tiles are in the open list. So um, let's do that. Let's go back to A star. So this means when our algorithm is done, we will need to uh, use the A star debugger. And we can do that by saying, just do like this. This is only for debugging needs to be removed later. Okay. So now we know that we need to remove this uh, later on. So then we say game object. And as you can see, there's no such thing as game object. Just right click quick actions and use the unity engine. And the reason that game object doesn't exist in this uh, particular script is because it's not inheriting from mono behavior. So you have to write using unity engine up here to add it, to be able to use game object dot find a star debugger dot get component 
A-Star, Debugger, Debug Path, Open List. Okay. A-Star Debugger here is the actual game object in your game. So this is A-Star Debugger. It's very important that you write this name exactly the same here as it is out here in your Unity Editor because it needs to look through the hierarchy to find the exact object. When it has found that object, it will get component a star debugger. So it will get this component here. And on that component, it will call in here, it will find the script and it will call this debug path and ask for the open list so that the debugger can color every single tile in the open list. And that's exactly what we're doing right here. Okay, so if we save and jump in here, run the game, I click, this is my starting point, this is my goal, I click space, and then it changes color on the starting point because the starting point has just been added to the open list. Okay, so that's basically what we're going to do in this video. That's all we're going to do. We're going to add the starting point to the open list. So now you should be able to right click somewhere, right click somewhere else, press space, and then this one should change color. And you can change this color to whatever you want to. So in the next video, we will look at the neighbors around this, it's because now we have the starting point, and now we need to look at the neighbors to figure out which direction we need to go. So thank you very much for watching, and remember to follow me on Twitter, like my Facebook page, and subscribe to the channel. Also, if you like my tutorials, don't forget to share them. That's awesome if you would do that. And also, you can support me uh, if you like my work. You can support me on Patreon by clicking the top link, or you can support me by going through my own page and buying one of my products as a standalone product. So thank you very much for watching.